Good morning. My name is Adam Simo. I'm here from Cuyacasin Middle School, and this is our accelerated 7-8 math class. We're going to start off with our number sense routine. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. Awesome. All right, so we have our Vivis connected to our panels, and you guys have taken a uh, screenshot of it. What we want to do here is, with alike and different, your goal is to try to figure out which one of these boxes, which one of these numbers does not belong or is different than the others. Each one has a reason why it is different than the other three. So using this screen capture tool, you can use a text tool, you can write on it, whatever you want to do, try to come up with a reason for each one of why it's different than the other three. Take about two minutes and then we'll use the Vivi to share and go over our answers. Go ahead. Can we put more than one answer? Yes, you may put more than one answer. That's a good question. All right, if you have a question, let me know. You can annotate, use your text tools. If you want to talk with a neighbor and share your ideas as well, go ahead and do so. Yeah, just hop over. And when you're ready to share, go ahead and give control, and I'll share the screens up on the board. What are you guys thinking? Got different ideas? All right, use the text tool, type up. Look to see, look for the easy things. Like what's the obvious reason? Like this one's different because of this. This one's different because of this. Don't have to get too technical. Yeah. You got a reason? Oh, it's, it's done, do that. If it doesn't work, don't worry. All right, so if you want to share request control, there's a request control button. And if you want to share, even though you're on Vivi, you can raise your hand and do that. You should have Vivi. Okay, about one more minute, we're gonna share. Winnie, you have a ton of information there, my friend. You gonna share some of that? Hopefully, something. So think of basics. It doesn't have to be anything crazy out of control. Like, why is that one different? Because it's a five. Okay, type that in there. Yeah, it could be that simple. That's perfect. Don't don't go don't overanalyze. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. What would a fourth grader say? Why? How how is it different? That's write it in. There you go. There you go. That's good stuff. Just use your text tool. All right, so here we go. We're going to start sharing. If you're still typing, no big deal. Maybe you see something and you realize, hey, but the goal is to see if we can figure out why each box is different than the others. So let's see who's going to share first. All right, Daniel, you're going over to the uh, display two over there. So you're going to share over there. All right, and then we're going to have somebody come over to the first screen. All right, Daniel, you're on the left side. Nice picture. Can you explain one of them for us? Um, the So the negative 5x, because it has a negative 5, a negative? A negative 5. It's the only one with the negative 5. You guys agree with that? I like it. Natalie, you're coming over here to display 1. Let's see your, what you have to say. Which one do I choose? You, you choose 1. He already did the 5, so we'll pick a different one. Um, I choose the bottom left one because it's the only one with an exponent. Ooh, so you picked the bottom left, this one right here, orange, because it's the only one with an exponent. You guys agree with that? Yeah. Is that a good reason? Mm -hmm. Perfect reason. Riker, are you ready? Yeah. You're going to display over on uh, slide two, uh, screen two over there in the corner. Mm -hmm. Give it a second to load up. Here it comes. All right, a lot of you are circling different things, which means you probably have something. So we picked two. Riker, give me another one. Um, I would say negative 5x because it does not have a 3 in it. Okay, it doesn't have a 3. All right, somebody said the other one had, uh, has, it's the only one with a 5, so this one doesn't have a 3. Good, I like it. Uh, Winnie, you're coming over here to the main screen. And you guys are going to be like, whoa. Because she wrote a lot of things. 
here it comes. It's like the movies. <laughs> All right, when he explained one of them. I know, it's a lot going on there. Which one? Uh, you have the top left or the top right? Top left. Top left, what's different about it? It's the only one that's positive. You guys agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys, anybody else see that? Yeah. All right. We have one more. Who, who wants to share the top right? Who wants to share top right? Did you share your screens? Hey, and Michael, Shocker. You guys, uh, let's see. Um, Michaela, let me see if I can find you here. Oh, I don't think you're connected to, oh, there you are. Or not Michaela, Mariah, here you go. Ooh, maybe not. Okay, Mariah, I'm going to have you come to this screen as well where Winnie was. All right, Mariah, you circled negative three. Why does that one, is that different? Or? Because it has no x. It's got no variable, right? So it's the only one without the variable. Good. All right, we've been talking about all of this for the last few weeks, but now we're going to jump into our lesson, which was the slope and y-intercept. So what I want you guys to do, you can go ahead, you can leave Vivi connected, just click on the back arrow or leave this part of it. Open up Desmos, and we're gonna continue on the last slide, continue exploring what does slope and wider set mean before we start practicing. I created a new Desmos for us today, and we're gonna practice once we kind of continue working on that. So Mariah's gonna lead the way here with her screen. Thanks, Mariah. So she's gonna make sure everybody gets the same thing. So open up the Desmos. It should be under the agenda. So you guys can see what it looks like from her side. And I'll open it up on my side. Let's see, what slide did we leave off on? Looks like, looks like slide 14. Yeah, let's go to slide 14. I'm gonna paste you guys there in the Desmos just so we can get everybody the right slide and get you there a little quicker. So here we are. And don't worry, Mariah, I'll take off the Vivi so you don't have to worry about leading the way, but you're doing a great job, thanks. All right, so last time we talked, we talked about slope. Somebody remind us, what is slope? What does it mean? We're still trying to figure it out. A lot of you are not sure what it means, but give me some basic things about slope. What do we know about slope? Harper? How steep a line is. How steep a line is. Okay, can, what else about slope? Slope can be what or what? Increasing. Can be increasing or decreasing, which means it can be positive or negative. Have we talked about what no slope is? Can there be such thing as no slope? What do you guys think, yes or no? What would no slope look like? Oh, what is no slope? What does that look like? Think about going skiing. You want to go skiing with no slope? No. Could you? Yes. What's that called if it's no slope skiing? Skydiving. Skydiving? No. I mean, essentially. Actually, there's a type of skiing. What's it called when there's no slope, really? Snowboarding. Not snowboarding. That's kind of, I'm, I can't snowboard. It's called cross country skiing, right? Because it's what? Flat? All right, so here we are with the first one. It's been a while, but we talked about slope. What was the other word we talked about with, that goes along with these functions? Y-intercept. What does the y-intercept mean again? What, how do we know what the y-intercept is? Where do we locate it? What does it all mean? Winnie? It's where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, we find that point. That's the y-intercept. Okay, some of them are going to start off, it's going to be pretty easy. If we do not see a y-intercept in our equation like this example, what is the y-intercept? What is it? Zero. If it's not there, it's zero. Good. Top number, we like fractions. We said it's the change of y over the change of x. x. Okay, we talked about the rise over run. run. So take a minute, see if you guys can determine what the uh, t the line is here that shows y equals one half x. So drag these little points. All right, we have a point right here. All you have to do is just drag them. It, one spot stays at zero, it helps you out. Drag this up and see if you can find out what the slope is. And I'll have somebody come up and share it. 
All right, take 30 seconds, see if you can come up with it. I see a lot of check marks. So if you do it correctly, yes, a check mark does come up. I see some people that went a different direction, which is awesome. Instead of doing one way. All right, Aiden, go up there, show us what you put. Sarah, be ready, you're gonna show us a different way. Explain too for me, Aiden. So Aiden, how'd you get there? Or did you just start scrolling until a check marker peel? Um, so I, just, I, knew, I knew that the Y didn't have a number, so I put it on zero. Okay, so it stayed there, good. And then halfway up, went to that letter, and then I put it on the grid. And then okay. And then Okay, so the first number one means we go up one, and the two says to do what? Over two. Go over two, so up one over two. Sarah, you did something different. Can you come show us where you put your dot? Do you mind? And I want you guys to see what she does and tell us why did that work. You can be aggressive with it. There you go. What did she do? Um, I Natalie, what did she do? She, so she reversed the fraction. She ah. went over two and down one. Or what else did she do? So instead of one half, she went negative one, and then she did what? Negative two. Is that okay? Yeah. Why? It's still on the same line. Still the same line. Yep, because we know negative, what is it? Negative two, negative one because we reversed the x and the y. Why is that the same? Why is it okay? Okay, still touching it. Right, exactly. What do you guys know about two negatives? Make positive. Still make a positive, right? So we have the same thing. All right, let's go to the next one. This mine? I hope this is mine. I'm gonna stop the thing. So head over to 15. And what I want you to do is I'm gonna give you guys about three or four minutes. You're gonna see that 15, 16, and 17, and maybe even 18. Yeah, so go ahead and practice the next three, and then we're gonna have you guys share. What I'm gonna do is come around to different tables. I'm gonna give your table a number, and you guys are gonna share Vivi. I'm gonna give another table another number, share their Vivi. So, does it have to be everybody? So it's maybe talk or pick. Which one of you guys want, who wants to talk or share? So take two minutes, and I want you again, take a look, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, here we go. Question 15, I'm gonna switch over to Vivi and see who wants to share. Um, Aiden, you have 15? Aiden, or you guys 16? You guys are 16? Yeah, All right, you're 17. All right, 15. Who over here? Peter, you share? Explain? Yeah? Yeah, okay. All right, here we go. Peter's gonna do 15 on display one. I'm gonna hook somebody up over to 16. Who's 16? Which group's 16? Jade, are you 16? I'm gonna put you on two. All right, Peter, share what you guys have for 15. You want to go up there and share? Or you want to just talk from your seat? That's fine. So for the slope, what is the slope? Five. So what do you have to do to get to, to five X? How do you have to show that? Good, you go up five and over how many? I heard it, one. So we start at the center, slope is five, up five, rise five, over one. Is that still a fraction, five over one? Mm -hmm. Yep, good job, Peter. Um, Jada, you said you're gonna share? All right, let's put you over on display two. Did you wanna share? Okay, all right, here we go, Jada. You're gonna go over to display two and share, and then I'll get Asher ready for the next one. Of course, it's gonna be slow for us. It's technology, right? Ooh. All right, do me a favor. Can you go over to 16, Peter? All right, just because it's being slow on my end. So over here on the main screen, all right, Jade, explain how the slope is three uh, over two. How do, how do we do that? 
Start at the zero. Why is it at zero? Right, no y-intercepts start at zero. So we go do what here? Up three? Over two. Over two, as simple as that. Good, 17. Um, who's doing that one? I forgot, sorry. Asher? No, Caden, sorry. All right, Caden, here we go. I'm gonna put you on all the screens. No pressure, okay? This is 17. Who's got 18? 18, Harper? We'll, we'll, what happened? Yeah. Kaden, you're you're up, right? All right, Kaden, explain to us uh, 17. What did you do? Um, I went Go ahead up there, because mine's not working, so I'm going to just share this. Drag yeah, drag it. This one's a little different. Okay. And then what about the y-intercept? Where should that y-intercept, that second dot, go? What do you think? You guys have something else? What do you guys think? What is the y-intercept? Somebody help them out? It's okay. No, that's perfect. I like it. What's the y-intercept, guys? What's the number at the end? What is it? Four. So can you drag it up to four? Go ahead and drag that second dot up to four. The one right there at zero. Yep. Go up to, no, go to, go up total four up the y-axis. There you go. So now we have a dead line. Now go negative two from there. Where's negative two? Yeah, go back over to the y-intercept. Go up to the y-intercept. And then go down two. And which direction does he go now? Ooh. Which way, Winnie? Left? Let's go left one. And we're gonna talk about it. So good job, Caden. You got it set up. Actually, we'll figure it out. But we want to thank Henrico County for coming out today. We're gonna to keep going with our lesson. You guys are doing an awesome job.